large, the world of stars and planets and galaxies. The standard model has nothing to say about how they interact. And it's a problem we've yet to solve. When you want to understand the way the universe has evolved, so, so what happened to it straight after it began and how it got to how it is today, you've not only got to know about the, you know, how many galaxies there are, the way that stars work and the way that planets form, you've also got to know what the fundamental building blocks of all those things are and how they interact together. And in particular, it's not only the stuff that's in the universe, but the way that stuff talks to other stuff. It's, it's about the forces. If these forces didn't act on matter, nothing would happen. The stars wouldn't shine. The atoms that make up the planetary bodies would fall apart. The universe would disintegrate. It's the forces in the standard model which hold everything together. There are four forces that we know of in the universe at the moment. There's a thing called the strong force which sticks nuclei together. This strong force is what binds the quarks together to form the nucleus at the heart of the atom. It's electromagnetism, the kind of quite familiar force to everyone. This force holds the electrons in orbit around the atomic nucleus. And a thing called the weak force, which is quite unfamiliar, but it allows the sun to shine, so it's incredibly important. The weak force explains why some atoms undergo radioactive decay, the process which fuels every star in the universe. But crucially, one force is missing from the standard model. Gravity. In the everyday world you and I inhabit, clearly gravity is all around us. It's what keeps you in your chair at home. It's what keeps Earth in orbit around the Sun, and it's what holds our galaxy together. And Einstein, too, thought gravity was pretty important. His general theory of relativity beautifully describes how every celestial body interacts with every other body through this force. The universe on the grand scale can be entirely explained by Einstein's equations. But there's a problem. The moment we try to merge general relativity with the standard model, we encounter immense difficulties. So immense, in fact, that nobody's been able to work out how to do it. They're completely incompatible pictures of the universe. The problem is, they're pictures of the same universe. Something has to be wrong. The standard model is incredibly powerful at describing the world of the small the quantum world. But as soon as you try to add gravity into the standard model equations, they break. Einstein was searching for just one set of equations that would work on both planets and particles. Nothing less than a theory of everything. This was Einstein's greatest failure. At the smallest distance scales, his theory just falls apart. Einstein spent the last 30 years of his life trying to rectify the problem, but he never succeeded.
53 years after Einstein's death, his theory of everything still eludes us. This is CERN's theory corridor. Inside each room is a theoretical physicist. And inside the head of each theoretical physicist is a different conception of our universe. The first physicist to coin the term a theory of everything was CERN's John Ellis. When we talk about a theory of everything, we mean a theory of the fundamental constituents of matter uh, and the forces between them. Uh, you can somehow think of it as a uh, sort of cosmic genetic code. Right? Uh, in fact, the standard model already you can regard as being a sort of genetic code for making up the regular visible matter in the universe. All the visible matter in the universe is made up out of the same quarks and electrons and things that, that we can measure in the laboratory. Somehow or other, uh, these things can be combined in all sorts of ways to make uh, people as complicated and bizarre as, as you or, or, or me. The search for this cosmic genetic code is the ultimate quest for physicists. We want to finish what Einstein started. You might wonder why we believe the baffling complexity of the universe can ever be reduced to a single theory. The answer can be found back at the Big Bang. If we journey back through time, the universe shrinks. Galaxies disappear, and the stars evaporate into gas. As we draw to within a couple of hundred thousand years of the Big Bang, the universe becomes opaque. Eventually, we approach the moment when atoms vanish. Now things get really strange. Seconds away from the Big Bang, the atomic nuclei break apart. The universe is now so small and so hot that only the naked fundamental particles of the standard model exist. This is the time of the Higgs. It's at this time that the LHC will spend most of its working life. This is what this machine was designed to do, to open a window onto the time when the Higgs ruled the universe. But some of us believe that it may give us a glimpse of something even more profound. Beyond the Higgs, the universe continues to condense Eventually, even the fundamental particles of the standard model disappear. We are approaching the moment of the Big Bang itself. In the instant of creation, there must have been a time when the universe was nothing more than a single, unimaginably hot, fantastically small entity. The entire universe was made of just one thing, pregnant with possibilities. Remarkably, we have a highly speculative theory that attempts to describe this era. It's called string theory. In string theory, the concept is that particles, the objects that exist, are actually vibrations of a single string. And uh, like, the, um, like the notes of a piano, uh, they vibrate once or twice or three times and each note corresponds to a different particle. So if everything was just the notes that you could play in a piano, a single piano, maybe a single string, that would be a very simple idea. String theory is certainly the best candidate we have for a theory of everything which would combine all the different forces, all the different particles and make a decent cup of coffee. These peculiar strings, if they exist,